Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for April 18th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawkwatch. This morning started out with a bit of sun, but then it was overcast for most of the day, including a darker period in the mid-afternoon with a few sprinkles that really slowed down the flight, and then some clearing again towards the end of the day. The winds were moderate out of the southeast for most of the day, with an occasional switch to southwest, and the temperature started out quite cold in the morning, but warm to up around 70 by the afternoon. There was good non-raptor migration overnight, and that continued into a good morning flight, and we had a lot of northern flickers migrating again today with around 90 total. We had the first really big push of purple finches today with constant migrating flocks in the morning for around 1,200 purple finches total for the day. There were also a lot of rusty blackbirds migrating in the morning with around 350 total for the day. Sharp-shinned hawks started migrating early today and with the southeast winds they were kept nice and low and we had a lot of good looks and it was a really big sharpie day with nearly 500. And by mid-morning, they were joined by small groups of broad-winged hawks. And we had our first day of over a 1,000 broad-winged hawks. And we didn't really have any big kettles, but it was just a constant flow of small groups. And we had the most of the day, except for when it really got dark there in the mid-afternoon with the rain showers. We are starting to see some of the early warbler species as flyovers. Here we have a yellow-rumped warbler. And we also had several pine warblers, which were the first of the season. This near adult bald eagle came in off the lake and gave us probably the closest look I've ever had at a bald eagle ever for hawk watching or otherwise. It was just spectacularly low and it was a big hit for the big hawk watching crowd. Here's another hawk that was a big hit. Here we have a dark morph beautio. We can see it's got kind of longer skinny pointed wings. This is a rough legged hawk. We see a dark trailing edge to the wings indicating that it's an adult and we see multiple tail bands. So this is probably an adult male, which are the blackest of the black rough legged hawks. Very pretty bird. We got the heads up from an observer in Oswego that there was a turkey vulture with patagial tags headed our way. So we kept the lookout and eventually I spotted this bird coming by. Here we have turkey vulture A07 and I've been in contact with the person who banded this bird. It was banded last year in Sandusky, Ohio as a second year male. And this bird was seen 11 days ago in West Virginia. So hoping to get some more information about the life history of this bird and what the project is all about. And I'll share that update once I have it. Here we have an eagle with a relatively small head with golden nape. This is a golden eagle and we know it's an immature because of the white base to the tail. Although this one does not have much white in the wings. And here's our second golden eagle of the day. Again, notice that really small head with the golden nape. And on this bird, we do see big white patches in the center of each wing and the white base to the tail. So this is typical of the juvenile type birds that we're seeing this time of year. Here's another bird that drew some oohs and ahs. This great egret gave us a terrific look after it took off out of the marsh. During that slower period in the afternoon when the sky got dark and there weren't as many hawks, there seemed to be a few warblers moving about. Here we have a pine warbler in a tree. And we also had the first palm warbler of the season. Despite the large number of sharp-shinned hawks today, we were only able to pull out a few Cooper's hawks. Here we have an example of a juvenile. Notice the larger head and notice the teardrop brown streaking concentrated on the upper breast of this juvenile Cooper's hawk. And as the sun popped out just before sunset, we had two great blue herons that flew by really low and gave a nice look in perfect lighting. It was a great day of hawk watching and we had a big crowd for it. We had 40 people who signed the visitor book today. Taking a look at the eBird list, today we had 77 species, quite the total for this time of year. We had five new species for the season, which were bank swallow, chipping sparrow, white-throated sparrow, palm warbler, and pine warbler, for a total of 124 species seen so far this season. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrating raptor totals, today we had 181 turkey vultures, 11 ospreys, 17 bald eagles, 68 northern harriers, 458 sharp-shinned hawks, four Cooper's hawks. For Budios, we had four red-shouldered hawks, 1,326 broad-winged hawks, 48 red-tailed hawks, and one rough-legged hawk. We had three golden eagles. And for falcons, we had 86 American kestrels, five merlins, and one peregrine falcon for a total of 2,213 migrating raptors. That brings the April total to 17,753 and the season total to 36,056. 
Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, they're calling for thunderstorms in the morning, then occasional showers for the afternoon, with a high in the mid-60s. Winds southwest in the morning, shifting westerly at 10 to 20 miles per hour with the passage of a cold front. So overall, it's hard to predict how good tomorrow will be because the winds are favorable in the morning, definitely. A southwest wind is good for us, although it keeps the birds higher usually as opposed to southeast, which keeps them low. And sometimes on the southwest, birds can cut the corner of the lake. So that's a little bit of a concern. Um, But the other concern is that it'll just be too rainy and we won't end up getting any flight at all. Um, So I would definitely check the radar in the morning and check the weather forecast and see if there's going to be some gaps in the rain because We're talking about southerly winds right in the peak time of the season. And the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch near Rochester had 9,000 broadwings go through today, about 10,000 raptors total, and those birds did not reach us. So between here and Rochester, there's 10,000 raptors that are ready to move. These are adult birds that want to get migrating. And so if we get any sort of little gap in the weather, they may take advantage of that, especially with the southerly winds. So... Um, don't let the rain scare you too much. Um, but if it does happen tomorrow and we get a big flight, it will be different than today's flight. Today's flight was kind of very steady. The whole day we had a lot of Sharpies and Kestrels and Harriers. And then during the brighter periods, we had things like Eagles and Red Tails and Broadwings. Tomorrow, if it happens, it's probably going to happen within a very short window. And it would probably be ahead of that cold front hitting, which looks like it's going to happen sometime in the early to mid afternoon. So we'll have favorable southwest winds ahead of that, and then you usually get a big burst of birds um, pushing ahead of that westerly wind shift. So um, it's sort of similar to what happened a few days ago when we had a big morning flight. Um, So anyway, um, if you're feeling like taking a little bit of a gamble, come on out. Again, it could end up being a total dud, but it could also end up being something pretty spectacular. But again, it will probably be a relatively short window of intense migration if it does happen like that. And also it seems like a really good night tonight for songbird migration. So with those southerly winds overnight and then some scattered rain into the morning, maybe we'll get some songbird fallout. There could definitely be some new arrivals. So uh, it should be an interesting day to be out regardless, even if the hawks don't show up. But we'll cross our fingers and hope that something spectacular happens. And uh, we won't know until we go out and see what shows up. For Sunday, it's looking sunny with a few clouds and a high in the mid-40s. Winds northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So we'll be down at the south lookout, and uh, it will kind of depend on what happens tomorrow. Um, If we get all those broad wings tomorrow, then Sunday may be a bit slower. But if those birds don't come through tomorrow, we could get a big south lookout flight uh, on Sunday. So keep, keep an eye on that tomorrow. We'll see what happens. And for Monday, it's looking cloudy early with showers for the afternoon and a high in the upper 50s, winds southeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. So it's a great wind for us again. Uh, It looks like the morning might be the better time of day, and there may be some rain showers in the afternoon to slow things down. But Monday is looking like it could be a pretty good day. But again, we'll keep an eye on that as we get closer. All right, a great day of hawk watching with a lot of great people, and we'll get to do it many more times over the coming weeks. Hope to see you out soon at Derby Hill. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.